Good morning. Welcome, friends, to Ebenezer United Church of Christ, where no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, we are so glad that you're here. As we gather here on this fourth Sunday of Advent, as we anticipate the light of Christ being born anew into our hearts and lives in the world, we're going to hear in our scripture today about the Word coming into the world, the Word made flesh in Jesus the Christ. And yay, thanks be to God, today our children and youth are going to make that story come alive. So now, let's join our voices together as we worship in prayer. The words will be on the screen for our unison prayer. In the shadows before dawn, your glory shines, O God, lighting the way for holy love to be born anew. We come, longing to see your glory, praying that you will once again speak life into being and call us to walk by the light of your love. Amen. Advent is a season of waiting, waiting for the hope peace, joy, and love of God to break into our, our lives anew through the story of the birth of Jesus, through acts of hope, peace, joy, and love. Today, we light the fourth candle, the candle of love. The candles of our Advent wreath show the transformation of the night sky as the light of the sun comes to shine on the earth. The poet George Herbert wrote, Love bade me welcome, but my soul drew back. It's hard to take in the enormity of God's love made flesh in Jesus the Christ. We look at the candles and enjoy the special music of the season, but it's easier to listen to the radio and eat Christmas cookies than to dwell on grace and truth. The psalmist knew it long before Jesus. For with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is great power to redeem. God became one of us out of love for all of us, then and now and forever. When we light the candle of love, we stop in awe of God's unending love like the, the dawn of a new day. Steadfast love surrounds us. And now, as you remain seated, we will sing the response waiting for you. Our scripture today comes from the book of John, first chapter, verses 1 through 14. The Word became flesh. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. 
What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of the people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Here ends the reading of our scripture. And we now ask you to stand and sing together two verses of It Came Upon a Midnight Clear. Words will be on the screen. It came upon the midnight clear that glorious song of old from angels bending near the earth to touch their harps of gold he sung the earth good will to all great news of joy we bring the world inside Sing. For lo, the days are hastening on by prophet bards foretold, when with the ever circling years comes round the age of gold, when peace shall over all the earth its ancient splendors fling and all the world send back the song which now the angels sing Hello, Lucy. This is Mrs. Widow. Oh, hi, Miss Widow. What can I do for you? You can stop by explaining to me why on earth you chose to cancel this year's Christmas program. Canceled? I understand that because of our current health crisis, you have chosen to cancel the performances. No, Miss Ritter. I think you know better than to listen to. May I remind you that in your contact with the church, you agree to put on a Christmas program every year? And I intend to, Miss. This church has had a Christmas program every year since a great-grandfather founded it. And we will have one this year. It's just that, well... It's going to be a little different. How different? Well, for starters, we'll be doing it online instead of in person. Online? Yes, Miss Ritter. How on earth is that going to work? Well, instead of having a choir of kids bunched together on stage, we'll have a choir of kids bunched together on screen. You mean like one of the Zoom meetings that young people are always talking about? Yes. And we'll be singing traditional carols. Yes, they will. Mostly. Mostly? 
We're living in extraordinary times, Miss Fitter, and that calls for something extraordinary. Hi, Dave. Hi, Lucy. Are you ready for your big scene? I sure am. Wow, that's a great costume. It is? Yes, you look just like the prophet Isaiah. Your costume is amazing. Okay, but this isn't a costume. It's my bathrobe. It is? Yeah, see, I'm still wearing my pajamas too. But it looks so dirty. It looks like you've been living in the wilderness. Well, it has been a while since I washed it. Like, how long? Let's see, today is Tuesday, so I want to say it was April. April? <laughs> Don't judge, what do you expect? With all the quarantine stuff, I haven't worn real pants since Easter. Oh my. So how do we do this scene anyway? Well, I'll press record and you'll just speak into the camera like you're addressing the people of ancient Israel. Yeah, about that, Lucy. If this is a Christmas program, why am I reading from the book of Isaiah? Because Isaiah is one of the prophets who talked about the hope of the people and the promise of a Messiah hundreds of years before Jesus was born. For real? For real. Wow. Are you ready? Let's do this. We're rolling, go for it. The people walking in the darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Perfect. Cool, thanks for letting me be in the program this year. Hmm, you know what, you know, you want to know how you can thank me? How? Wash that robe, it's disgusting. <laughs> What's up? Hi, Rachel. Hi, Lucy. Are you two ready for your big scene? Ready when you are. How about you, Rachel? No, I'm not. I'm not sure I can do this. Why not? Lucy, I'm a stage actress. I've never done film before, especially like this. Oh, boy. <laughs> You're gonna be just fine, Rachel. Just listen for your cues and say your lines. Say my lines? Actors don't just say their lines. I need to know who this woman is. I need to know who, what her motivations are. You're Mary. You get called to be the mother of Jesus and you say yes. But why do I just say my, say yes? What, what's my motivation to say yes? Obedience to God, faith. Mary was a woman who loved God, and despite all the challenges she would face, she gladly accepted God's call. Make sense? Yes. Yes, it does. Good. I'll just try to go with it. Okay. Thank you. Eddie? Hang on. I'm almost done with my game. Game? I got bored with you and Rachel talking about motivation, so I decided to play some Galaga. Eddie! Okay, fine. I'm back. Let's do this. Ready, Rachel? Ready? Action. Oh, what do I have to say to all that? If I just to choose to obey, I will be an outcast. My own family may reject me. 
Yes, even my beloved Joseph, but do I dare disobey the call of God? Rachel? No, I cannot say no, no matter the cost. I must not be afraid. I must be thank faithful. I must be... Just say the line, Rachel! I'm the Lord's servant. May it be with me as you have said. Wow, that was great! Really? It'll do, Rachel. Thanks, guys. No, thank you, Lucy. Thank you for believing in me. Th for believing I could branch out and do film. Oh, brother. <laughs> How's it going, Bob? Okay, I guess. You all set for Christmas? Yeah, but it sure doesn't feel like Christmas. We usually do all our shopping in stores, but this year we had to do it all online. I know what you mean. I always enjoy the crazy crowds at the mall. It's not the same when you point and click online. It's not the same when your grandma can't come to visit either. No, it's not. But think how that first Christmas was to your character. He had to pack up his pregnant wife and travel many miles to Bethlehem all because the emperor wanted to do a census. Yeah, and there was no room for rest for his wife. That had to be really hard. Life always has its challenges. True. So where's the innkeeper? He should be on in a minute. He said he was still busy with work. He's still working? Isn't he a travel agent? He is. Is anyone actually traveling these days? He says they're doing very well. Clearly, the people living with hope that things can be different isn't limited to the stories in the Bible. Oh, there's Jared now. Am I fashionably late? Hey, Jared, how's it going? Things are going great, Lucy. I just booked another family cruise for 2023. 2023? Here at Paradise Travel, you can book now and get a great deal. I'm sure you can. Are we ready? Ready when you are. Just a second. Jared, why are you wearing your name tag? What? How did that thing get on my costume? But sort of fits the theme, me working at a hotel, doesn't it? You're the innkeeper, Jared? Take it off. I'm taking it off. <laughs> OK, guys, take it from the top. Excuse me, sir. My wife and I have traveled very far, and we need a place to stay. I'm sorry. We have no room available. Please, my wife is pregnant. She may have a baby tonight. I'm terribly sorry. I don't have any rooms. Nothing at all? Perhaps next time you'll book ahead. May I recommend tra Paradise Travel Agency? Jared. Jared Whitman and his friendly staff are there Monday through Friday to help with all your travel needs. Jared. Whether business or pleasure, the good folks at Paradise- Jared. What? I thought it was going great. Jared, this is not a free commercial. This is the Christmas program. Can you please just do the lines? Fine. Take it from Bob's last line. <sighs> Nothing at all? 
I can see you're really in need. I have a stable out back. It's not much, but it'll get you out of the cold. And there's some soft hay where your wife can lay down. Thank you, sir. I really appreciate this. It's my pleasure. Sorry I can't do more. You've done more than enough, more than you'll ever know. Nicely done, guys. Great job. Thanks, Lucy. You know, I always found it strange that Joseph couldn't get a room in Bethlehem. As a travel agent, I wonder how many rooms were even available in the town. Especially with so many people in town, it seems the Son of God deserved better. I think God works through unexpected and hard things. It doesn't seem right that God's child was born in a stable, but Jesus was poor and told he didn't belong his whole life. From the very beginning, he knew what it was like to feel like there's no room for you. But that's why people loved him and why people were so drawn to him. They believed him when he said, the kingdom of God isn't like this. In God's heart, there is always room for everyone, no matter who you are. Yeah, I see what you're saying. God didn't wait for the right time or place. God's love was born into the world in a humble stable. That's a sight more beautiful than a Hawaiian sunset. Hey, shepherds. How's everyone doing? Hi, Lucy. I miss seeing you at church. I miss seeing you guys, too. And look, you all match. We decided to coordinate. <laughs> totally my idea to do with the bathrooms and towels. Don't we look awesome? I'm sorry, Steve. What was that? It was my idea to go with the bathrooms and towels. Steve, your mic's not on. It's not? Steve, turn your mic on. How do I do that? It's the little icon on the bottom of the screen that looks like a microphone. I don't see any icons that. Steve, turn your mic on. I don't think. No. Turn your mic on. I'm trying. Do you think he can hear us? I don't know. Maybe he can't. I can hear you just fine. I don't think you can hear us. Steve, I got you a new PS5 controller for Christmas. And I got you a Star Wars hoodie. Guys, he know, you know he can hear you. A new controller, a new hoodie, you guys are the best. Hi, perfect timing. Look how stunned my shepherds are. Wow, they look truly frightened. All except for Steve. Steve, look frightened. Like this? <laughs> Quick, Eddie, say the line. Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign unto you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger because there were no room for them in the inn. Great job. Now, shepherds, who's got the reply? Steve, I was kidding. Er, I was kidding about the Christmas gift, Steve. Me too, Steve. You were just messing around. Guys, your line? Let us go to Bethlehem to see the thing that the Lord has made known to us. Now, someone besides Steve, since he can't turn his mic on. Let us go to Bethlehem to see the thing the Lord has made known to us. Beautiful, just beautiful. 
Hey guys, Merry Christmas! <laughs> <laughs> hey, great costume, Jake! Thank you. Aaron and Ron wanted to coordinate, so they told me to wrap the gift in birthday paper, get a crown from Burger King, and just wear a... Uh... Guys, why are you wearing the fancy King costumes they were selling at the Halloween station in the old CVS? Sorry, dude. Really, I am. You look good, bro. I love the crown. Oh, jeez. I can't believe they got me again. Again? Last year, for the Zoom Easter program, they told me all the disciples were wearing Jedi robes. We all log on in our bathrobes, and here comes Simon Peter looking like Obi-Wan Kenobi. At least I didn't have to spend money this time. Well, other than the $3.99 I spent on a Whopper so I could get my crown. Just go with it, Jake. You boys ready for your scene? Ready? We've traveled for many days and nights from the east to come to this land. We come to, f we come to find the newborn king. We saw his star in the east and we brought gifts to worship him. We went to King Herod's place, but the newborn king wasn't there. We walked through the streets of the royal family, but he wasn't there. We rolled past the homes of the wealthy, but he wasn't there. We found him in the arms of the wife of a poor carpenter. The Messiah had come. We bowed down and worshipped him. We thank God for allowing us to see his face. We offered him gifts fit for a king. Gold. Frankincense. And myrrh. Are you sure those aren't Legos? Looks like Legos. <laughs> Boys. <laughs> Sorry. But the greatest gift of all was a child who received our gifts. God's child, the Prince of Peace, our Savior. Hope, peace, joy, and love born into the world, laying in a manger. We came to worship and adore him.
Hello, Miss Ritter. How are you? Lucy, I just had a wolf cut of your so-called socially distance Christmas program. Okay, I'll clean out my office and be out of here by noon. I love it, Lucy. Wait, what? Lucy, what you did was incredible. To pull all those people together online and tell the story of Jesus. I didn't think it was possible. You did a wonderful job. Thank you. I must admit, I didn't think you could do it. I expected you to fall flat on your face. Well, can't say I blamed you. I wondered about it a few times myself. In a strange way, your Zoom Christmas program really captured the most important parts of a Christmas story. I know it wasn't easy. And then I started thinking, it wasn't easy for Mary or Joseph or the wise men who traveled so far. We come from a long line of people who stepped up to the challenge to show up or, sh or see God's love. That's so true. Can you imagine running on camels all that way with no air conditioning, no Spotify? Okay. You told the Christmas story in a way that is filled with meaning. Lucy, that in Jesus, God's love was born into the world in these, oh, yeah, in these troubles, troubled times. And God is still right here with us, even in these troubled times. Thank you, Miss Fitter. That is exactly the gift we wanted people to receive from the story. Now, how are you gonna end it? With great joy. From all of us to all of you, Merry Christmas. Steve, turn your mic on. Oh, give me a break. We wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, good tidings to you, wherever you are, good tidings for Christmas and a Happy New Year, we wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Oh my goodness, thank you so much. Wow, there was a lot, a lot of moving parts and that all came together super quickly, mostly because of the superhuman Herculean efforts of Dar Ad. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
We have something we want to give to you. There's a star on here. We have the star of Bethlehem signifying the light of God's love coming into the world. And you are such a light of God's love among us. You shine and burn brightly and warm all of our hearts and lives. So thank you so much. And friends, now I would invite you to this time where we have the opportunity to be grateful and generous as we join together and acknowledge, Holy One, for all the ways you deliver us from evil, from indifference, and from despair, we give you thanks. You shine in our darkness and reveal a world of light and abundance. We share and pray that they may be blessed to reveal your spirit of love wherever is needed. Amen. Friends at Ebenezer United Church of Christ, we share our gifts, our tithes, and our offerings in a number of different ways. Some of us give through uh, the church website. Some of us have automatic electronic giving. Others of us use the drop box at church, and still others of us prefer to share our offerings in worship. If you prefer to share your gift today, there are plates at both of the exits, offering plates, so if you, um, you can, are welcome to leave your offering there. We pray God's blessing on our generosity. If you have an announcement or an acknowledgement that you'd like to share this morning, I ask you to please come forward at this time. Friends, please note that Tuesday, December 21st, the winter solstice, which is the longest night of the year, is our longest night service. Sometimes it's referred to as a blue Christmas or hard-to-be-merry service. It's an opportunity for those of us who have experienced loss of any kind loss of relationship, loss of hope, loss of a loved one. For anyone who is grieving or needs a sense of, ho of hope in these times, we invite you to please join us for worship on Tuesday at 7 p.m. Thank you very much for those flowers, Lori. That was beautiful. But this task not, does, does not pull together with just me, as you can well you know, you saw all the moving parts, but you also saw moving people trying to make sure that everyone was where they needed to be. Um, first of all, a big thank you to the AV team for making it possible for Max Sawacki to be part of the program. There were a number of children that we thought were not going to be able to be part of this. And because it was a Zoom meeting, we figured, why not make it more challenging for AV and see if they can make that work? <laughs> so. Thank you much to Nick and Sue for pulling that together, because that was amazing. Um, to Rev Lori for her script editing, because you know there were some things that needed tweaking. It was, it was a program I found, but she makes it make, make it right for us here. And the rest of the AV team as well. I, you know, Sue and Sue Kaiser and Nick Schersel, but Julian Harville, he's back there clicking his heart out, making sure the slides are where they need to be, and then also my husband Tom. Um, the music, Charlie TD helped out get that stuff together for us ahead of time. Thanks to Alan Dodds, who's been recording forever for us so that we had music to go. And um, Tom also for kind of tweaking some of the stuff I needed so the kids could sing the songs that we had. My assistants, Barb Schersel, Sue Adamatovich, and Rev Lori for helping make sure people got where they needed to be and, and um, microphones where they needed to go. Um, our face mask crew, if you notice, the kids all had masking, face masks that matched. Um, of course, I just mentioned to Julie Kinney that was what I wanted to do, and Sunshine Stitchers went, we'll do that. So Julie Kinney, um, Kathleen Athorpe, and LaVon Athorpe are our magical mask makers. And uh, to the parents for making sure the kids all got here, that they practiced at home. I could tell they practiced music at home. They did an awesome job. But mainly to the children. You kids are really rocking it today. Thank you so much for what you did.
And thank you for showing up. <laughs> yes, thank you for showing up. And we want to provide the opportunity for you to know that on Christmas Eve, you can show up at either 5 p.m. for worship or 10 p.m. for Christmas Eve worship. The Sacrament of Holy Communion will be offered at both of those services. In this very busy time of the year, friends, we ask that you please keep Bob Mulbrecht, the father of Brittany Mulbrecht, in your thoughts and prayers as Bob's cancer has advanced and he has entered hospice. So please hold Bob and his wife Linda and their family in your hearts and prayers, as well as Dorothy Munich, who is in hospice, and Cindy Hammond has asked for prayers. Cindy will be having rotator cuff surgery next week. Um, well, the week between Christmas and New Year's. And while Cindy would love your prayers that her surgery and recovery goes well, Cindy also found out on Wednesday that she has stage one breast cancer. So though she and her doctors are optimistic, as anyone who's gone through it knows, cancer is a big, huge word, and uh, it's really scary. So your thoughts and your prayers mean so much to Cindy in these times. Friends, speaking of things that mean so much, for decades, the music ministry of Ebenezer United Church of Christ has had a significant impact on the ways that we are inspired during worship and are moved to show God's love in all the ways we can. For 37 years, Alan Dodds faithfully shared his time and his talents, his tremendous knowledge about, like, everything, and his profound faith with us as our organist, and at times also as our music director here at Ebenezer, in times of struggle and in times of celebration, and in ordinary times that Alan made extraordinary. He has consistently been present, the accompanist of the soundtrack of our life together as a community of faith. Even though Alan officially retired, on December 24th of 2020, he continued to work with Charlie to create organ and piano accompaniment tracks, helping us to transition not only to online worship, but helping us to transition to new models for worship and music ministry in these liminal times. So today, almost a full year after his retirement, we have the opportunity to celebrate Alan Dodds and his music ministry. Alan, we celebrate you, we offer our sincere thanks, and we lift up our gratitude. Because in so, so, so many ways, Alan, there aren't words to be able to fully express our appreciation. So today we just say, thank you, God. Thank you, God, for Alan Dodds. You are a gift who we will continue to treasure and hold dear in our lives. So, Alan, the members of Ebenezer have a number of things that they would like to share with you today. First, we have a gift. And it's more than just this gorgeous box. This is amazing. So, Alan, if you'd like to come forward, we have a card a gift for you. So you can open your present. <laughs> you can open it early. I give you permission. <laughs> Given a sense of who you are, you can open it before you open the card. That would be fine. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, ask your sister-in-law how you get in there. <laughs> I'm going to cut it right here. How's that sound? They did a beautiful job of wrapping that, didn't they? So, Alan. Right? In your retirement, you've had lots of opportunities to enjoy the gift of nature right outside your window. So that's just something to add to, yeah, the beautiful collection. 
outside your window. And also, when you're not at home enjoying that, Alan, I know that you and Cheryl have had some plans to explore the world in a number of different places. So the congregation has a gift for you, Alan. People have contributed. So we would like to give you this check for $1,400 to add to your travel fund. And here is the card with our thanks and appreciation. Tiffany, is it time to go? Hmm. Say, come on, wrap, wrap it up. So, my friends, may the spirit of the living God made known to us as Christians most fully in Jesus Christ our Lord go before you to show you the way. Go above you to watch over you. Go behind you to push you into some of those places you might not necessarily go yourself. Go beneath you to uplift you and uphold you. Go beside you to be your strong and constant companion and dwell within you to remind you that you are never alone on life's journey and you are loved, loved beyond your wildest imagination. And may the fire of God's blessing burn brightly upon you, within you, and through you, my friends, now and always. Amen.